Hey, I'm Doug, this is Backcountry Pilgrim, and I'm hot. Temperature-wise. So in my part of the world, the quarantine is finally starting to lift. It is time to get out and start doing some hiking again. But I live in California, and in May, we already had two or three over 100 degree days. Although a lot of parts of California are still covered in snow, down here in the valley where I live, it is extremely hot already. And although there are a lot of cooler places to go, it's time to start thinking about hiking when it's hot. There are some important considerations to make when you're hiking in the heat. And a lot of these are pretty self-evident, pretty intuitive, pretty obvious, but some of them are actually a bit counterintuitive. There are different ways that the sun can affect you, that you can get heated up, and some of these are more dangerous than others. So a big part of avoiding problems with heat is avoiding exposure. As you can see right now, I am getting blasted by the sun's rays. I haven't got a lot that I keep up top here to keep me safe from those things. So one of the things I'm gonna to wanna to do right away is put on a hat. Now, if you've seen my other videos, you might have remembered my uh, hiking hat. This is the Sunday afternoons. It's got a cape on the back, nice big stiff brim. When I got it, this was the most popular hiking hat of the year. Gives you full coverage all the way around. You've got a nice lightweight cape in the back. It's got a drawstring so that it doesn't blow off when you get in the wind. Something I just picked up recently is the Outdoor Research caped cap. And what this is is more like a baseball cap style, but it's got a detachable cape on it that keeps the sun from blasting you on the sides and the back. So this really creates a nice lightweight kind of room for your head that keeps the sun off unless it's coming in at an extreme angle. The drawstring is actually attached to the cape and not to the cap. So when you cinch this thing down, it can actually form a pretty solid cover for your face and it just encloses you inside. And yet it is still pretty lightweight. It's got nice venting on the sides and yet you're still getting full coverage for your ears, your neck, back of your neck. And if you pull this down and you start hiking in it, the wind literally just kind of picks it up and actually creates something of a draft around your head to keep you cool. It's also detachable. You just pop these two buttons and you can pull it straight through the hat. And then you've just got a regular baseball cap. So let's talk about your clothing. There's basically two things you need your clothes to do. You want them to shield your skin from direct exposure to the sun, but you also don't want them to hold your heat in. In other words, you wanna be able to take advantage of the fact that your body was designed to cool itself off by sweating. And if you're wearing heavy clothing, especially cotton, you're gonna trap that moisture and it's going to cease to cool you off the way your body was meant to. So when it comes to materials, you want to use something synthetic like this Nike shirt right here. I think it's called a dry fit, but pretty much every major manufacturer has some kind of cool, dry, dry, cool, fit, dry, whatever. You want to get something that is designed to wick moisture off of your skin, blow off and keep you cool the way your body was designed while at the same time keeping you covered. So for example, one of the shirts I like to wear is this Columbia shirt. It's long sleeve. It is very light and it is also very reflective. I also got it about a size too big from what I would normally wear. And the reason is you also want your clothes to be loose. So when you're looking for shirt and pants, what you're looking for is long sleeve, you're looking for light, light colored and lightweight, and you're also looking for loose. That's gonna keep the air flowing where you need it to. So if I was actually going for a hike today, especially in this sun, I would not want my arms exposed. I would put something like this on. Yes, it does make you a little bit warmer, but the trade-off for exposure is worth it. Another thing I would recommend, and this is not something I brought with me, but it's one of these long sleeve button-up hiker shirts. But they're essentially what looks to be a standard button-up long sleeve shirt, but they have a couple of extra features. Many of them are vented quite a bit. A lot of them have a special strap that allows you to roll the sleeve way up and secure it. And while it may seem weird to hike in a button down shirt, they're actually incredibly useful because they can be changed while you're hiking. If you wanna go from long sleeve to short sleeve, you can do that with a long sleeve shirt, but you can't do it with a short sleeve shirt. You can unbutton a couple of buttons for extra ventilation. You can unbutton it completely and get a ton of ventilation. 
So I'm a big fan of those kind of shirts as well. They do a great job keeping you covered while continuing to regulate your body temperature. Now, when it comes to pants, sometimes I will go with shorts, and when I do, I try to go with another kind of synthetic material. Runner's shorts are also a good idea. They tend to have support and ventilation where it's convenient. You're just trying to keep the sweat off of your skin. You don't want those salts being left behind and causing chafing. Now, I often hike in pants, and typically what I'll bring are these Columbia zip-offs, also known as convertibles. Basically, the whole bottom of the sleeve on your leg zips off and these convert into shorts. And this is pretty much what I hike in most of the time. The pockets are made of mesh material so that you are not increasing your heat when the pocket is up against you. This is very lightweight material. It's light in the sense of being reflective. So you've got long, you've got light. And again, I get these a little big so that they're nice and loose. So for the weight of a single pair of pants, you've got a pair of pants and you've got a pair of shorts. You don't have to completely undress to make the change. Now, I'm not gonna model these for you, but I am a big fan of ex officio underwear, kind of semi-covered mesh that is extremely breathable, extremely quick dry, and they are form-fitted to get around the anatomy, especially for guys, so that you don't end up with skin on skin rubbing while you're hiking. As you sweat, you're not just getting wet down there, you're also getting salty. And what that means is that you've got crystals that are literally rubbing together like sandpaper. I don't have that happen with something like these because they're form fitted so that it's always material rubbing against material instead of skin on skin. Another thing I like to do is wear very lightweight socks. These are no show ankle socks. These are the Injiji <laughs> How rude. So I personally prefer the Injiji toe socks. This is basically a lightweight glove for your foot. It keeps the material between your toes. So again, you're not rubbing skin on skin and they are extremely lightweight. In fact, when I'm hiking in normal weather, I use these as my initial liner and then I put a hiking sock on over those. But you can use just these if you want to. Let's talk about shoes. If you are out hiking hot, it's great if you can get a pair of trail runners or lightweight hiking boots that are mesh covered so that your feet can continue to breathe even while you're hiking. I personally am a big fan of the Ultra Lone Peaks. I've done a number of videos reviewing different versions of them. But basically, if you just get the standard Ultra Lone Peak, they are mostly mesh. You can literally put a flashlight inside them and, and see through the shoe. Uh, these are fantastic for hiking when it's hot because your feet continue to breathe. Next on my list of hot hiking gear items is a buff. I like to just clip one of these onto my backpack. It's great for swabbing off the head. You can tie it around you like this, wipe away, get the sweat out of your eyes. You can put it around your head like a headband. And best of all, if you come to a creek or a river, you can just soak this in there, put it around your neck like a neck gaiter, put it around your head. It's nice and cool. This can help a lot. And finally, one thing that I have heard a lot of people talk about, but I have never really used myself, are hiking sun gloves. These are usually three quarter or half finger gloves that are very lightweight. And basically you wear them in addition to the sleeve to keep the sun off of the back of your hands. Now I would probably not use these unless I was in an extreme situation, like maybe a Southern California desert, Arizona trail. I usually just rub a little sunscreen on the back of my hands and I am good to go. But if you're gonna be in a situation where you're gonna be seriously exposed to sun, remember that skin on your hands is part of the organs of your body just like the rest of your skin is. So you still wanna keep in mind that we have to be careful with exposure to any skin that is showing. And finally, I wanna suggest something that probably does not occur to very many hikers when they're first getting started, but that is to carry a hiking umbrella. Now I've done an entire video on this umbrella, so I'm not gonna get into it right now. What you've got with these is a reflective surface on the outside, a nice dark black interior, and essentially what it gives you is portable shade. Now portable shade is important because if you're starting to really overheat, which we're gonna talk about in a minute, you need to get out of the sun. You've got to get out of exposure. And if you are in an area like I am that doesn't have any opportunity for shade, it's really nice to bring your own. Now, I know it's extra weight, but I gotta tell you, when you're actually hiking with it, it's really not a big deal. In fact, you're actually holding it down most of the time rather than up because these umbrellas are so lightweight that even the breeze from just you walking lifts 
the umbrella into the air. So you can actually be quite relaxed while you're hiking and still have this umbrella in your hand. And if you want to free your hands up for trekking poles or a camera or you just don't like carrying stuff, I've got another video you can watch about a little device from Gossamer Gear, costs about five bucks, that attaches the umbrella to your shoulder strap and allows you to hike hands-free with a shaded umbrella covering you the whole time. All right, well, I hope this has helped you out. I hope it is gonna make your hot hiking a lot more pleasant and a lot more safe. Again, my name is Doug, this is Backcountry Pilgrim. If you like the video, I would appreciate it if you would indicate that by clicking the like button and make sure to subscribe to the channel and click that bell so that you know the next time a video drops. Until next time, take it easy. These are the engine. Thank you, helicopter. Trying to make a video here, no big deal. It's not wasting my battery or anything. It's all the noise you want.